Welcome to Chopped it was the for wrong Time. Hand, man. I know. Is it the wrong hand? Sorry. Yeah. Welcome to Chopped <laughs> for better, Time. Much better. Uh, <laughs> I'm Britt Bush. I'm here with uh, Pastor Thomas and Pastor Ben, and we are going to talk about uh, yesterday's sermon. <laughs> Take it away, sir, and kind of you know, talk about what you talked about. I talked yesterday. about, once again, what I talked about yesterday. Yes. And then I talked about it kind of all the way through the last week as well. If, you know, Thomas is one of those that uh, has the fortunate uh, distinction as being a, hey, man, here's what I'm thinking about. What do you think about this? Should I think about this even more? Uh, no, John chapter 3 took a little bit of a bold strategy yesterday. Had a dodgeball moment there with uh, the ESPN 8, the Ocho moment of it's a bold strategy cotton bold let's see how it pays out for him you know plays out for him so i read three john chapter 3 17 through 21 mm. did not read john three sixteen, although i did go back and reference it so yes. i keep my preacher credentials there yes uh, so now you know just on the basis that we're that's the section where jesus is having the conversation with nicodemus you know nicodemus comes to jesus at night Nicodemus, religious leader, a judge at the time, he would have been, um, you know, a Sadducee uh, on that kind of ruling, governing, and judge board mm. uh, type thing. And he comes, Nicodemus comes to him at night, starts making some inquiries as to, hey, I'm hearing this, people are talking about this, well, I'm curious. And you know, Jesus, you know, makes the statement in John three sixteen. Which you know that's the foundation of the gospel, man. Yes. It's the it, it's the banner of the Christian faith mm-hmm. for a reason. But I presented that if John three sixteen, if your gospel stops with John three sixteen, then it's an incomplete mm-hmm. gospel, not inaccurate, not heresy. It's just not complete, right? Because John seventeen through twenty one. I believe Jesus answers four questions that complete the gospel message. So we know that at, from 316, that God so loved the world that he gave his son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life with him in heaven. Then we start seeing some of these questions being answered. The first one is in verse 17. Why did Jesus come? Mm. You know, it, simply put, you know, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. So verse 18 uh, gives us the, uh, the answer to the question, how are we saved? It's through Jesus Christ. You know, later on in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Ephesians 2, 8 tells us that it is by grace through faith, by God's grace through our faith, that we are saved. And this is the work of God through Christ Jesus. Seems to be a theme. Right, right. I mean, it's it's kind of all flowing. (laughs) Um, Then the third question, verses 19 and 20 out of the John chapter 3, what do we need saved from? And kind of simply put, ourselves. Absolutely. You know, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, also, Romans seven fourteen through eight four. That's where Paul writes the famous, I'm, "Why? Why am I doing this? The things that I hate that I don't want to do is what I do, and the things I want to do I don't do. Uh, oh, wretched man am I! You know who will save me from this body of death?" And then Romans eight starts. For therefore, there is no longer any condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And then verse twenty one. Um, answers the question of how do we live now? Mm. You know, we we live in the light. And we looked at 1 John 1, 5 through 7, where John writes in a different place, you know, live in the light, be in the light as he is light. Uh, and that's how you know that you'll have true fellowship amongst the believers is when you are living in the light. So that's that's the four points of that John three seventeen through 21. And that 21, you know, we see that and that's, you know, Jesus speaks all through that and it's, it's together. And I really, you know, I, I enjoyed the fact that, that you started with 17, you acknowledged 16 mm-hmm. and then, but 
That's 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 one statement by by Christ there. That is one fluid yeah. that you know yeah. we we focus on three sixteen like you said, but that is all one response, and you know we really need to to take it as such. So uh, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed you reading yesterday the uh, you know the words of Paul. You know it's I don't do you know yeah. What I need there was, to a, there was a, that, a longer section of what we would consider a supporting or supplemental scripture to the primary passage. Um, and that was one of those things I was like, okay, so do I just kind of reference this or do I read it in its entirety? And sometimes, most often, probably more than what we do, it's well worth reading that because, absolutely. man, there is just such, and especially in that passage, Paul just uses such powerful words and terminology. You know he he doesn't you know he doesn't um, he doesn't mince words at all, Paul. That's yeah. you know his that's his his uh, trademark, and and I really enjoy that. And he just lays it out there uh, for all of us yeah. to follow. So, yeah. Thomas, yeah, one of the things that stood out to our middle schoolers was the around just the word condemnation. They sort of mm-hmm. were well, it's, it's not a familiar word to them, so they were wanting to talk about that a little bit more. But uh, you know that Jesus didn't come to condemn but came to save um but obviously then it you know it gets into verse 18 of we we were able to break down a little bit of like okay yeah jesus came to save us he didn't come to just scold us tell us off and tell us how how wretched we already are um so you know jesus came to save us so then we were talking a little bit about then what what does condemn us and they were talking about you know they were trying to figure that out and you know eventually sin came up and we were just like okay so it's not that whenever you hear about Jesus and you say no it's not at that point that Jesus says okay now you're condemned it's like you condemned yourself already Mm. you know it's like Jesus didn't come to condemn you we did that ourselves (laughs) you know we managed to pull that one off Um, he came to save us and they were able to sort of it was just cool uh, to see a couple of them click that it's not it's not a once you hear about Jesus then the decision is made of which way you go it's you were already on a path, and he offered a, a different one, if that makes sense. And mm-hmm. um, which I think in their mind maybe didn't hadn't quite clicked yet because it was always like until you make the decision for Jesus or not, then your path splits. Mm. As opposed to you're already on your way to separation from him. Right. But he gave you this alternative, which I mean, what a wonderful thing of you know we have this debt that we cannot pay that he came to pay for us. And we we broke down that you know the the issue of justice, you know, where there's a price to be paid for our sin and it had to be paid. It would be, it'd be wrong of God to just say, don't worry about it. Yeah. It doesn't need to be paid for, you know, so that's why Jesus had to die because there, there had to be a price that was paid and he was the only one actually able to pay it, um, which was just kind of cool to see that sort of click with a couple of them of um, recognizing like how it works. You know, it's like because one of the questions you put there was how are we saved? Mm-hmm. Just kind of breaking that down a little bit, I think, was really cool for them yeah. uh, to see. So good. Yeah, we I, uh, we were talking last night in our in our small group, and and I wanted to go back and if my Bible app here will cooperate uh, to read that twenty one um, verse again. We talked about that a little bit last night, but whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it might be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Uh, you know, and that does, that word does implies action on our part. Mm-hmm. So it really, you know, Christ is setting, you know, he, he gives us, I love the, the fact that you were up, it's an, it's an alternative path to what we were already on, but that is, it's an alternative path that we have to take. You know, it's not a, because if we read 316 in and of itself, just belief, you know, belief leads to other things in our life and it has to lead to other things. It can't just be like, well, I believe, you know, I believe in, well, take it for something uh, worldly. I believe one day the Bengals will win the Super Bowl. I may not see it. But I believe it's going to happen one day. I don't know. I just throw that out there. Um, but you know, <laughs> but it's not. The but, fans. Yes, yeah. but it's nothing really that I have to do. I just have that belief, you know, that it's going to happen one day. It'd be nice if it did. To follow 
Christ is not just simply have to be a, a belief. It has to, you know, there are actions that go through that. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, you know, because we see, you know, believes in him and we read that. Um, and, and one of the dangerous things, because we later see, you know, in, in the book of James that even the demons believe mm. and yes. tremble. He just, he just yes. pulled it up. Did you? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> man. My, my bad. Um, but, and, and maybe that's where we need to spend a little bit of time here today because I think that there is a, um, a pretty prevalent train of thought that as long as I believe that I'm good, but what we see in Scripture over and over again is that, yes, it, we must believe, but believing in the Christian faith is an action. It's not just a thought. It's not mm-hmm. just a state of mind. It's not just something that we grasp with our minds. It's actually something that we do all of those things with, and we believe in our hearts, but that leads to a transformation which spurs us on to good works uh, that he has created us for. Uh, so I, I would maybe kind of pose that question to you guys since you, you had the scripture pulled yep. up there. Um, that concept of belief as far as actually living for Christ, yeah. what's that look like? Yeah, well, the, which, this is actually what we talked about with uh, middle school as well is the, the, the fact that it's a verb. It's, it's a doing word. Like mm-hmm. it, and, and it's not that our action, it's not like we earn. This isn't like an earning based thing, um, but it's an evidence thing. It's like if you say you have faith in Jesus, you can't have faith in Jesus with no evidence to show for it, if that makes sense. I mean, you know, it's the same with if I say I'm married to Kylie, I never wear a ring, don't have any papers. No, like if there's You're never if there's with her, never with yeah. her, if there's nothing to prove that we're actually married or to show for it. Mm-hmm. Are, are we actually married, right. you know? Um, and that's I think that's kind of where James is getting to in James 2. If we do uh, verse 14 through 19, uh, it says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothing and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not a comp- if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, You're, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the <coughs> demons believe that, and they shudder. Yeah. You know, which, uh, I mean, it, th- it's, it's kind of hard here, like, just because it's so easy to hop on a legalistic mm-hmm. form of salvation with this, because it's like, oh, Okay, so I have to feed this many hungry people and I have to do this many, you know, clothe this many people, then I've then I'm good. Which I don't think I don't think that's what James is saying. You know, I think one of the things I think is <coughs> James is saying that as an example of like, you know, to say that you believe in God but have no deeds is kind of like going up to a homeless person and say, Keep warm. Mm. Doesn't doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, you know, that there has to be uh, uh, balance to it. But I remember the first time I ever heard that sentence of, um, you believe in God? Good. So do the demons. I was like, oh, yeah, there has to be something more than just thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that somebody said to me one time, which really blew my mind, is that there's a difference between saying that Jesus is Lord and making him Lord of your life. Two very, two very different very things. different things, yeah. yes. So. You, uh, and that brings up, you know, the, the um, when Jesus goes to teach in the synagogue and the man is there and he says what what do you have to do with us and mm-hmm. you know it, this this guy was in synagogue and he you know it's not just something that he you just show up at right i mean <coughs> excuse me but he's there and christ brings out this side in him you know and is they recognized the demons inside that recognized who christ was acknowledged who he was and and not only that, obviously, through what you read and what you read and what and what happens there, recognize the power in Christ to do something, to transform, to, you know. Um, and I think that's what we have to recognize also is that um, we have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, that we have power over these things, that we can, you know, we can influence, um, well, you talked yesterday, 
we are, who is our biggest enemy? Mm. Ourself, mm. right? Mm. And, you know, Paul talks about that and we chalk it up to that, but we have the power inside of us through who? Through Christ mm-hmm. to, to do better. Not that we're always, you know, we always fall short. We always, you know, Jody yesterday got up and, and he read, you know, he did the communion thought and he's like, you know, I fail daily. And, and, you know, Paul says that and, and, but we have the power inside of us through Christ, through the Holy Spirit to do better, yeah. to do better. But it is an action that goes back to that action part. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, the the last question of that passage again, you know, you read verse 21 there. I think that, that just gives us instructions as to how we're supposed to live. Yes. Um, in Christ and that that action within that belief. Um, you know, one of our devotions throughout the, the week last week and, and one of the points that I kind of mentioned in closing yesterday was we there's areas of darkness in all of our lives. You know, there's areas to where for whatever reason uh, the light of Christ has not yet shown upon it. Um, and I think that there's a couple instances of that. Like we can be in darkness uh, in our lives and and it be something that scares us it frightens us it's not what we desire because i mean that darkness is there's an element of unknown to it right like there's we we get scared even when there's when we're in a place that we're maybe completely familiar with if it's completely dark there's this element of unknown there and you know it it's not comfortable so to speak but then there's also areas of darkness that I think that we're pretty comfortable with. Mm. Like we've almost made friends with it. Mm. Like if, if the light exposes this, number one, I'm not going to be comfortable with this being exposed. Um, I, the lesson of, of light, always one of the instances in my life that t- it takes me back to is when I worked um, you know, on a riverboat, uh, you know, towboat for a local petroleum company here. And during the winter months, you know, it became all inside work whenever we weren't building tow or doing, you know, making a lock, whatever. And a lot of that was painting. Um, if you ever think that you can run out of uh, busy work on a tow boat, you are wrong. Um, <laughs> but, like, I was in one of, like, the you know, deep, dark recesses of the engine room that nobody ever goes to. But yet we were painting it. And I get it done, and you know, I'm, I go up to get the engineer, and I'm like, I think I've got it. And he went, okay, let me go check. So he goes down there, and like he takes one of the high-powered flashlights, and like he is that far away from the wall examining it. And he was like, nope, there's some areas, there's some speckle spots here. You know you need to hit it with another coat. And he was like, the more powerful the light and the closer it gets, the more imperfection <clears throat> it exposes. Hmm. And I was like, Wow dude like number one that's a little obsessive over this wall here but wow number two that's that's hitting me kind of deep right there uh but that first john one through five you know one five through seven thing of like be in the light as he is light and in him there is no darkness yeah so the closer we get to christ through that belief through that action the closer that light's going to get and the more imperfection it's going to expose you know, I think in Nicodemus, it says, and, and Mary Lou made this uh, comment last night in small group, and it's kind of a mic drop moment to me. It says Nicodemus came by dark, you know, mm-hmm. to Christ. And then what do we see it, him reference? The light, yep. right? So I don't think that was coincidence, yep. Yep. you know, that uh, he is, he's, he's making, um, you know, uh, he's being inquisitive. Mm-hmm but he's doing it in a safe manner. And uh, we don't we don't like to be out of our comfort zone. Right. We don't like that. Yeah. You know, it, he was comfortable in the position that he was in, but he was curious enough to go be you know, to go question, mm-hmm. but he wanted to do it at, at dark. Yeah. Wanted it concealed. Yes. Yeah, we last night with our high school and middle school group, we were talking about because we've been talking about like our, mi- our mindset, the kind of things we let run wild in our heads. And we were talking about criticism. 
last night when we sort of tried to break down the difference between good and bad criticism. You know, there's some that we should pay attention to, to learn from and grow. And then there's others that we need to just push aside because sometimes people just want to put you down. Or we looked at the example of Jesus, who when he, you know, he was uh, reading in the temple and then, you know, made pretty bold claims about who he was and people picked up stones to kill him. He didn't just take that at criticism and decide to change what he was doing. He actually got bolder. And we were, we were kind of talking about, like, look, if, if you ever get picked on for being a believer, never let that push you away, but actually use that and, and celebrate that mm-hmm. in, in a way. Like, if people can tell that you're a believer to the point that they're willing to pick on you, you're doing something right. Mm, yes. <laughs> you know, because clearly you're letting your light shine and you're being bold about it. You're not hiding in the darkness and trying to, you know, I think a lot of people nowadays just want to play the Christian card safe because, you know, culturally here in the in the West, you know, Christianity has been the main thing for a long time. It's never been dangerous to be a Christian. Yeah. Um, that might start to change soon. You know, the the world is changing a little bit and it's becoming less popular. So there is going to be, there's going to be start to be a little bit of a pressure to come by night and to hide your, hide your faith a little bit more and not tell people. But, um, but yeah, clearly there's, that's just not the way to do it. You know, the, the early church just had such boldness to just go out and proclaim the gospel. And, you know, if they were, you know, attacked for it, they would praise God in the midst of it. And, you know, it's a v- totally different thing. Whereas we're so nervous just to even tell people, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I think it'll be interesting, you know, just uh, to have, to see what that'll look like down the line, but just for people to recognize, to have a boldness to step out and, um, you know, share the light of the world, you know, because we can't just do that by night necessarily. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the, the be, we talked a little bit about la- the last night in our small group about being prepared to do that. You know, same conversation we had, but, you know, Jesus is trying to prepare us. He's trying to prepare you know, he's telling Nicodemus, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to have to be. And he's preparing him. And, you know, we need to take his word, the word. And uh, like we referenced in chapter one, and, you know, this is the word. Yeah. And prepare for those encounters that may be to come to prepare for for him, for his return. So, mm-hmm. you know, being prepared yeah. through that. So, uh Good stuff. Good stuff. Final, final takeaways. Um, uh, you haven't, you haven't talked in a while, Trudeau. Yeah. <laughs> I talk so much. Talk so much. <laughs> We've been meaning to talk to you about that. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Um, yeah, I just, I, I think coming to this understanding of just how dependent we need to be on Christ. You know, just the the New Testament theme of being in Christ, in Christ, mm-hmm. in Christ. Everything hinges <clears throat> on being in Christ. Our eternity hinges on being in Christ. And I think that that's really one of the messages that John is kind of, he, yeah, he's making the proclamation that Jesus is God. You know, he's revealing that identity in every word that he writes here in this gospel. But it's also followed up with just that importance of us being in him. Like, this is the guy. Now, be in him. And that's that's the two things that you have to know and that you have to live your life according to. The, uh, you know, being in Christ and coupled that with what you t- uh, read yesterday, the words of, you know, Paul, mm-hmm. and that is how we prevent ourselves from being our biggest enemy. And that, that was my takeaway, you know, working on myself because the enemy wants us to look at other things at other people and look what they're doing look what they're doing look what and we want to compare ourselves to uh people that we see in the bible you know it's human nature well i i wouldn't have done that well i'm better than that i wouldn't have i wouldn't even went there Mm -hmm. that's where the enemy wants us to keep our focus and to you know just take care of take care of yourself and you know i've 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 coached um, 
softball here. I'm not a very good one, but I was the only volunteer available. <laughs> so for a couple of years, I've coached softball, and that's what I would tell the girls would be like, you know, well, this is not happening because, it, listen, you take care of your position, mm -hmm. and you let them worry about theirs. And, you know, and I just – I've heard that, and, and I hear my own words in my walk with Christ, you know, when I want to get on that track – this is happening. I'm doing this because of this, this, and this. No, you just worry about being in Christ. Yeah. Just that simple. Just worry about being in Christ. Yeah, one of the, just going back to those four questions that you had put out, um, I think are just always good, four good questions just to keep going around in your mind at all times. Just yes. to, as, as reminders, you know, why did Jesus come to save us from our sin? How, did, how are we saved? through rebirth with Christ. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the only, the only way, uh, what are we saved from condemnation over the path that we were already on? And then the, how do we live now? It's like, you know, like in Christ, yeah. you know, just, I think just uh, as a refresher of just the entire message of the gospel is just always something that we have to come back to because we, we can get so distracted by all the other things, the theolo theological debates or yeah. the, the, you know, the right way to articulate that or this or whatever it is but it was just it's refreshing to just go back to the the basics of the gospel as a as a fundamental reminder it's all about jesus all about him and everything that he's done and still continuing to do through us and uh, it was just very refreshing so thank you i want to read the uh the quote before yep. we leave that yeah. you that we put up on uh, that you put up on facebook it says the only credential that guarantees entrance to heaven is the new birth and just how profound and simple mm -hmm. that is, you know, that's it. Yep. That's it. And we focus our minds and our lives around that and about being part of that, you know, that will we'll be all right. We're you good. Know? So that was good. Um, I'm really enjoying this. We're going to be back next week mm -hmm. in John 4. Yep. Uh, do you want to want to give us a little preview of that or yeah. just, or uh, just, you know, woman at the well uh, jesus goes through samaria uh, and we'll figure out that he did not have to go to samaria because there was no other means of getting to where he was going uh, he had to go to fulfill his purpose uh, and that's to be a savior to the gentiles as much as he was a savior to the jews looking so forward look to that. that yeah looking forward to that one more week in john before we take a little break yep. in february and uh, and focus on some other things i'm excited about that also so um we are uh you know we're we are blessed and i think we're uh well, this is a, this is a great path that we're on right now in the book of john i love the book of john yeah, so it's good little little uh little you know biased here i just that's always been one of my favorite books and just just the simplicity of it mm -hmm. simple and profound yep. so uh anything else thomas you good i'm good all right well you good? Good. I want to thank good. everybody for tuning in, uh, like and share, and all that good social media stuff. And uh, next week, it looks like the weather's going to kick back up. We're going to be in the 60s at the end of the week. So next week, I will be back at work. <laughs> and uh, Audie will be back in the driver's seat. And I uh, want to wish him safe travels home. But uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, God bless. God bless.